Northampton Commission on Disabilities. This meeting is being recorded and videotaped. So the first item on the agenda is um, introductions. So we'll just go around so we all know who's here. I'll start the ball rolling. I'm Tori and I'm the chair. I'm we'll Susan McCreary, vice chair. Ruth McGrath, secretary. Okay, you're up. Okay, Martin. Cindy Schubeck, a member. Uh, Paul Anziano, I'm just from the public. I am um, with Humes Transportation, which we operate the PBK Paratransit. And Nicole Rowan should be here shortly. Great. Roy Martin, member. City Councilor Marianne Labarge. Debbie Shaughnessy, ADA coordinator. Okay. Um, then the next item is public comment, but I guess we don't have any members of the public other than Paul, who we'll be talking to shortly. Who's this coming? We'll find it's out. Nicole. Okay. Good. Um, great. Okay, so um, do we have an, a quorum? Do we have enough people to do approval of the minutes? Well, not knowing... I, not knowing really how many people we have anymore. One, two, we three, have. four, five, six, one, two. Oh, you're a voter too. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, it seems like we would. Yeah. So, so you can, yeah, so you yeah. have a. I'm not a member. But when we don't have, don't um, have. you're an associate. How many do we need? We don't really. We don't know. Yes, and because when regular members are not here, those people who are, quote, associate members can vote. Mm -hmm. But even though we're under a whole new commission on disability versus the committee on disabilities, there was nine members mm -hmm. who are voting members, and then we had five associate members, and that really all has somewhat dissolved mm -hmm. until the mayor puts in place all of the members. Okay. Other than we know that um, Councilor Labarge is a voting member now. Right. So mm -hmm. we can just go with... Okay how we were yeah. okay so do we have a motion for approval of the minutes from September 10th I'll make a motion to approve the minutes Second. all in favor aye okay the next agenda item is um public accommodations seminar review is that you Patty yep I just wanted to um talk about that very briefly um we had that a few weeks ago here at the senior center and we had uh, folks from all over Massachusetts who came as well as the intention of city employees and a number of um, Commission members came um, Council Labarge was there. I was there. Ruth was there uh, Cynthia was there. Gay was there um, And I, I'd say it was a four-hour seminar the uh, Hannah Goodwin was an excellent speaker. She had I think we could have stayed and asked a lot more questions, but you know, it ended. It was a little hard being in there for all those mm -hmm. hours, um, and we did do sort of a uh, hands-on ex experience um, as if we were visually impaired. Um, and I think at the end, there we could have stayed for a lot more questions, oh, yes. um, especially around um, mm. service animals. That was like mm -hmm. the biggest topic. Mm -hmm. uh, so, but it was good, and maybe in the future we'll do it again. Um, the city's insurance company, Maya, is the one who paid for the speaker mm -hmm. um, and paid for all of the refreshments and um, anything that was needed with it. So it was, it was, I think, a very beneficial and uh, good. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds great. I wish I could have been there, but I wasn't able to. And as I'm thinking of. She was going to e email us the um, PowerPoint, but she, she hasn't done. You haven't I gotten it. it? I, got oh, it. I haven't gotten it. I'll forward it to you. Okay. Because Tori wanted that. I'll forward it to you too, Tori. Okay, that would be great. Um, is there any way to put it in, in Word? I'm not sure that I can read a PowerPoint with. Yeah, I can like, print each screen and paste it into a Word document for you. That'd be awesome. Love yeah. I'd love to see that. Thank you. All right. So. Um, we have our special, oh, I'm sorry, did somebody and, want to say something else? No, I was just going to say, Nicole is here. Oh, mm -hmm. great. She's coming off the PBTA. I think it's, um, well, is probably Mike? Mike or... I think it's Dan. Dan? Dan? Oh, okay. okay, why don't we... Um, is it Dan? Yes. 
Why don't we Why don't we wait a moment till he comes in then, and then we'll start because he will have some important input, I think. Oh, Paul, I'm here. I'm sorry. Oh, Paul from PPCA went out there. Oh, okay. Oh, I'm still not. But that, that should change soon, though. It will be. Oh, I thought it did because when when we had discussed it, it was all around. Is it on right now? Yeah. It is on. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I hope he's okay. I think, I think so. He was here last time. I think. Just started. No, this so is awesome. to schedule one, so we'll be calling Patty to uh, oh. book one up here. Great. Um, and you know what? We've been uh, working on the system wide study mm -hmm. um, for several months, and we had some public outreaches about that, and we have some more coming up, so I think. Uh, paratransit side. I, just, I wasn't able to squeeze it in, but we are going to schedule one. I think it'll end up being maybe like the first week of November. Great. Okay. Well, that's good. Michael Jackson, Aggie's coming. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. We're, let's just give a moment yeah, no, we'll get for him to come in. Do we, do we want them to move closer? Um, yes. Since they're at the end of it. If you no, want to come, come closer, closer, thank you. If all our other members were actually here, they'd be still yeah, chair. Here. So thank you for moving. That way you won't feel like you're yelling. Right, and we won't feel like we're yelling at you. <laughs> That's great. Thank you. Okay. So if there's something that we can answer today, we're happy to come back or follow up in writing. Or Thank you. Hi, Mike. Hey, Mike. Hey, Michael. Hey, old Mike. So we're just um, starting our, our conversation here about um, the van service. So. Um, I have a, a few concerns, and they're not all about me. Um, there are things that other people have mentioned to me, so if it's okay, I'll start with those, and then I certainly hope others here will chime in and talk about their experience, because this is definitely an opportunity to be heard and get feedback. Um, so I've had, and I've heard about others having some difficulties with scheduling. Scheduling. Paul, you know about the incident where I was dragged all the way to East Hampton and then back to my office and left on the van for a, a long period of time. And other people have told me that similar kinds of things have been happening to them. So I don't know if there's something going on with scheduling, if there's new people, or, or what's going on. But there's definitely been issues with that. Um, and there's also been a few times when um, people have mentioned to me that they've gotten different information depending on who they've gotten on the phone as far as wondering what service is available when. Um, like what's the latest time they can get a ride back from a certain area, stuff like that. And so I'm just concerned about consistency with that, and I'm just hoping that people that answer the phone can all have the same information to give out. Um. Tori, would you like me to comment on those as we go? Sure. Or oh, yeah. Wait? Oh, no, go ahead. So um, with the scheduling issue is um, – we have a number of people that we transport, and any given day, uh, people call in and we'll book trips. Mm -hmm. um, in the case of your specific, where they picked you up, picked someone else up, went into East Hampton and dropped someone off, and then brought you back into North Hampton. Um, the way that the scheduling works is sometimes people will get a 20-minute pickup window. So we have to try to make that 20-minute pickup window. And the only way to make your 20-minute pickup window with that other individual's pickup window was pick you up first, pick them up second. Then we had to get them to their appointment because it was a little bit earlier than yours. So the computer said, instead of just dropping you right off, uh, bring you into North East Hampton and then bring you back. So when you look at the whole scheme of all the trips before and after those trips, I could see how that system worked. Is it the most efficient? No, it would have probably made more sense just to drop you off first and then get it into East Hampton. Exactly. Hampton. But and in that case, the other rider may have been late for their appointment, is that what you're saying? They might have been. Um, so it's hard to, you know, to, to always make sure that it's 100% the most efficient. But I was picked up at right at the end of my pickup window. Right, because of the fact that we had to pick them up at their window, we had to get you towards the end of your window. It's, it's a, it, 
when you look at your individual trip, you sort of say it doesn't make sense. But when you look at the two or three trips before it and the two or three trips after it, you can see how it makes sense. But I know other people have been experiencing stuff like that too, like being left on the van for long periods of time. So I just wondered if there we was something. We hear it on occasion, Tori, but I haven't gotten uh, like a trend of calls, a trend of issues. But if, if you hear of it or you, you're hearing from other people that it's happening to, it'd be good if we hear about it right away and then we can look into them. And certainly, mm -hmm. um, so again, today is probably the first time in a long time that I'm hearing about it. But if we hear about it as a trend, then we too get on Paul's case and, and see what the heck is going on. Mm -hmm. Right. In that case, where you had called me about it, we did speak with right. your schedulers. Oh, good. We said, you know, just take a look at this and see. It does make sense the way it happened, mm -hmm. but it makes a lot more sense if you were to do it this way. And, and so we try to highlight that with our schedules. Whenever those situations come up, it's a training tool for us <coughs> um, mm -hmm. to, to reiterate with the schedulers yeah. to try to look for those little inconsistencies that happen from time to time. And again, it might come up once in a while, and I think in this particular case, when Paul and I talked about it before, the other person would have actually been late for an appointment. And I think that's that's what came out of that. But if it happens on occasion, it might be something like that. If it's happening something more regularly, like all the time. Mm -hmm. and it, like again, I'm saying if it's happening to you once, but I hear from two or three other people at the same time, to me that's a trend that's happening. Mm -hmm. If it happens to you two or three times, that's even a bigger issue. Yeah. So, uh, PBTA's goal is everyone should be on the van less than 60 minutes, um, and that's monitored every month. And we have uh, it's less than three percent of the riders are on the van for more than 60 minutes, and those are ones that are going like you know from Northampton all the way down to Springfield, or going from Westfield into East Long Meadow. Um, so, so less than three percent of all riders are on the van. You know, more than 60 minutes. So that, you know, and PBT monitors that on a regular basis. So. And actually to take that a step further is our goal is that the paratransit trips generally can take the amount of time that it would take somebody on the fixed road bus where so somebody in downtown Northampton um, going to, I don't know, Amherst or even somewhere else within Northampton, they might actually have to make a transfer. Um, downtown. That's not the the mode that we want to be in, but trips can, as opposed to the 60 minutes, trips can take a similar amount of time that they would take on the fixed route bus. Um, some of the longer trips that Paul mentions, those could take two hours on the bus getting from Springfield to Amherst and whatnot, and we don't expect somebody to be on the van for two hours. So I just wanted to clarify that a little bit. In regards to the different information that they're getting from the call takers or reservations when they call in the office, that shouldn't happen. Mm -hmm. Everyone has a sheet. It's just a spreadsheet. Okay, if you live in this community, in this community, what time can you what time can you travel? Um, most people don't remember every you know. There's 24 communities within the PBTA service area, so they always refer to that chart. Um, of course, yeah. So what I'll do though, this is the first I've heard about it. We'll go back to our call center supervisor and have them make sure they speak to all the individuals in that department to make sure that they're not trying to guess off the top of their head that they are referring to the information. And it changes from summer hours to winter hours. Yeah. Um, so that's updated probably right. two or three times throughout the year. Right. Do you think that could be part of the confusion a little bit, Tori? Is the, the summer hours, especially up here, is a little bit different than this time of year when the schools or colleges are back in session. So in the summertime, they might have said, you know, there's no service at, you know. No, I don't think so, because I was actually with that person when she made the call, and she clarified, you know, and it was clarified that this is what was happening right, you know, at this point in time. And the person, an example is um, this person wanted to know she needed to go from Northampton to Springfield in the evening, and she wanted to know what was the latest time that she could be brought back. And she was told one thing by one person, so she had hope that she could actually go to the meeting and be there for as long as she wanted to. And then she got a call back saying, oh, no, you have to be picked up earlier. And then she got another call back saying, oh, no, you actually, you know, have to be picked up even earlier so that you can be back at this other time. All right. So let Paul look into that specifically. Um, and the Springfield service, depending on the day of the week, does end a lot earlier than uh, 
service out here. So. Right. Um, but they do have a matrix, like Paul said. We've got every town listed, so if they say I'm going from Northampton to Springfield, we show the hours of service in each community by weekday, then by Saturday, and then mm -hmm. by Sunday. So okay. let's see what, what the heck happens. Now, that would be great. I mean, it just it was very confusing to this person, as you can imagine, and she had based her plans on what she thought was going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Agreed. So, um, and then the other thing, I have one more, and then I'm going to let other people... Get a word in edgewise. Um, I have one more thing, and I want to make sure. I want to clarify. It is definitely not everyone, and there are most of the drivers are fantastic, but there are just a few that I feel there really needs to be some kind of sensitivity training. Not so much about the logistics, because I know that you all do that, but just about not being patronizing to people who have disabilities. Um, we actually, we should have brought with us, and we can certainly bring it up anytime you want, is we started, uh, we finished up and started using our paratransit sensitivity video, which you are on yourself. Oh, I would love to and see it. Is on as well. Um, <laughs> and so we, there is a section that talks about just that. That's great. And, and to be honest, um, even from the PVTA perspective or the driver perspective, we have some riders that uh, prefer to joke around or go with nicknames and we tell the drivers to stay away from that mm -hmm. and then there's other riders that'll those same riders rather will complain that the driver is not you know mm -hmm. saying the things that they want them to say or whatever and then we have you know another group that we expect them to be much more professional and introduce themselves and and go that route and there's riders that don't want the driver talking to them at all so got it it's a little bit of everything but we certainly took the input of everybody that participated in that video I would love um, and we feel strongly about it that everybody needs to be treated with respect I would love to see that um, but I, I'm I, I'm not ta I'm not talking about that I'm talking about um, some examples and you guys that were here last time we met remember um, mm -hmm. the examples that mm -hmm. I gave mm -hmm. um, my disability is clearly not in my hands, so it's clearly not a major thing that I'm able to put my seatbelt on. So for a, a, an example of something patronizing is this one driver um, said to me, oh, I know you can put your, your seatbelt on yourself. Like, why is that conversation worthy? That's something you would say to a two-year-old. Oh, you're a big girl. You can do that yourself. You know, that kind of, kind of attitude. Agreed. Or... You know, that just really, and I don't really want to say who it is because we're being recorded, but I can say it privately to either of you if you want to know at another point. But I just found that to be very, very patronizing, and yet I had to sit there and put up with that because I needed a ride. Well, we totally agree. And again, I think uh, it's something that we wanted to make a mm -hmm. priority in the video, and there's a couple different segments where mm -hmm. us or somebody else is saying, Everybody needs to be treated with respect, and even if somebody gets on with a PCA, yep. we want you to talk to the passenger. Exactly. And, uh, even if whatever their disability is doesn't mean that they can't communicate or, or hear you or right. talk and like a, don't, an adult. Right, don't say things to people that you wouldn't want said to you, right. basically. Um, and then, you know, another, um, another person, another example. Okay, I have two work bags. I have a pocketbook and a work bag that I keep some of my stuff in, and that's all I have. So I'm getting off the van, and this one driver says to me, I've always admired how organized you are. And I was like, what do you mean? He goes, well, you manage all those bags and all that stuff. And I, I was like, really? It's, it's really patronizing to act like it's a big deal that I can like manage two things. It's not like I was juggling 500 things. Or that it was complicated so that felt very patronizing to me like wow it's so wonderful that you can do this simple thing when I'm actually a competent adult so that's mm -hmm. another example okay. um, and then a third example and then I'll be quiet I promise <laughs> um, a third example was um, another driver said to me oh you look pretty a male driver and it's like it's one thing to say, oh, I like that purse, where'd you get it? Or, oh, those are pretty earrings. But like a comment like that felt patronizing okay. to me as well. So those are just, 
those are some examples of what I mean. And I, I just think, I think, I, I don't think it's necessarily coming out of a malevolent place. I think people are really not aware of what they're doing. And let's face it, there are many deep entrenched attitudes about disability and about people with disabilities not being on a par with other people and it's manifested in comments like that. So um, that's what I have to say and I really like other people to say stuff as well. I I'm sorry, I, I'm, I completely missed that in space. Did they say you look pretty? Did they say did to you, say did you, you look, look pretty? pretty? When, you know, the comment, did they, did they say to you, oh, oh, you're getting all this, did you look pretty? The, the driver said to me, you look pretty. I think I would be a compliment. Dan said, I think that, that I would think that would be a compliment. <laughs> I, I don't know, it just felt, maybe it was just the tone of voice that it was said in, it, it just, I don't know, it just felt a little weird. But I, I could be, maybe I misread it, I'm not sure, but it, it, it felt strange. Plus I didn't think I looked that good that day, but. <laughs> <laughs> no, what you could have interpreted now, I would say, and this is what we try to train, is that that could be interpreted as a compliment, or it could be interpreted as an, well, why are you saying I look pretty? Of course I look good. Is, are you surprised that someone who's riding the van looks pretty? Um, you know, so you could interpret it as that. Mm -hmm. So, um, again, in our trainings, we try to emphasize that, that mm -hmm. how you say things, the tone you use, <laughs> um, can come across different ways. We use the example of, uh, if I'm holding up a magazine and we're both looking at it, mm -hmm. we see the same magazine, but, you see the back cover and I see the front cover. Two mm -hmm. different things. Um, and, and so we try to reinstate that. And that's why PBTA has been very good at trying to help us create tools and with this new video, the sensitivity video, which covers five different areas. Um, and we might have to create a second video which creates other areas. And there's been national studies um, throughout the industry that one of the main concerns of transit agency is customer service. It's always it's towards all the top. About mm. customer service. Right. It's how to improve it and how to continuously try to improve it. And we're always so, trying to strive to do So that. the different areas of the video, it goes from uh, scheduling, customer service, call taking. I'm not sure what else the other ones are, but it hones in on sensitivity type mm -hmm. of scenarios in each of those Good. topics. And that's the main function. And I, I want to say that that third example was the most mild. I mean, I was much more concerned about the other two examples that I gave, um, like about m making it conversation worthy that I'm able to put on a seatbelt and that it's like amazing and wonderful that I could pick up two bags. Like those were, to me, those were much worse. Um, but, and I know other people have experienced inappropriate comments too, and I don't really want to speak too much for other people, but I, I'm just saying, I'm just saying that that is, that is not good customer service, and certainly neither of you wants drivers or anyone else speaking to people that way, I'm sure, because right. that's just not okay. I'd like to see um, you know, better driver identification, like names of people. Um, you just kind of want to know the names of the people who are driving. And it's like, just, um, I, I was taking the vans for, you know, twice a day for years. And then I retired. And it's been real nice for me to just bump into drivers. Like, when I was coming here, I don't know the guy's name, but he dropped somebody off here. So we were just chewing the fat a little bit, you know, and that's kind of nice, but it'd be nicer to, to have people's names. There are all drivers supposed to be wearing their IDs. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. But I, I can't, I can't read that. Yeah. No. Like, and so a lot of them don't. They're supposed to introduce it. themselves to, you know, yeah. depending on the disability too. Um, and they, they often don't, like I know some of their names from people that have, you know, been around for a while, but. 
Some of them I don't. It'd be, I don't know, it'd be nice if there was more Large print name tags? Yeah. Maybe uh, something like in New York City where they have the, you know, on the back of the seat. Yeah. You know, they have the a bigger book. placard. Yeah, the big placard on the back of the seat with a picture of the driver and name and, you know, the whole ID of the driver. So. It's also interesting, too, that um, if people don't identify themselves to me and I'm not aware, I'm not able to read their ID, I mean, it, it makes it harder in a way if I want to make a complaint. Although, of course, if I just tell you, you can look it up on the schedule, but it's just, it's sort of a way of remaining more anonymous. Yeah, we'll take all the feedback on the name tag situation, I'm not sure. I don't have an answer right here what we can do, and obviously that'll be up to Paul, but we'll see mm -hmm. what we can do. You could have in the front of the bus a sign that says driver today in the person's name. It doesn't have to be the whole, you know, the last name, just the first yeah. name. And we also train all drivers that if anyone does ask who they are, they're supposed to identify themselves. Mm -hmm. um, that it, it, it's a major disciplinary action if they, you know, Say I don't, I'm not get telling you who I am because, no. like you said, we know who's we know where they are and who they're picking up, so it's very easy to track mm -hmm. and trace. And we just tell them, you know, I mean, it could be a compliment or it could be a concern. And, you know, we'll look into it, and, and you know, free training is necessary. So, if any if any passenger ever says, well, what's your name? Because I, you know, you know, we want to report the situation. We're supposed to tell them, mm -hmm. and, and we train them to do that. Mm -hmm. I know uh, I'm the president of the Tenant Association over here, and you know, there's been times that uh, people will call for the PBTA and, and they'll come down and be sitting there waiting. And I'll say, Well, I called an hour ago, or I called two hours ago, or this was arranged three days ago, you know. And, and, you know, you get all frustrated and everything. Um, so the vehicle was running late? Yeah, you know. And, you know, they, they have it all arranged for to go to a doctor's appointment or this or that. And then, and then by the time the bus would get there, the PBTA bus would get there, right, they'd be late for their appointment. And, you know, they'd come in the office, they'd ask me, can I use the phone and call, you know. So, I'm going to use phone to call up the doctor and whoever. So. What is the um, the time frame? So let's say the appointment's at 2 o'clock. Mm -hmm. What is the window? It must be within half an hour, isn't it? Mm -hmm. No, for, for an appointment, if they have a 2 o'clock appointment, um, they can either tell us what time they want to be picked up, which is normally what happens, but right. I think at PBTA or for the services, rather, it's historically been that the rider gives them the appointment time. And then the pickup time can be backed up, I would say, probably about an hour and 15 minutes before the appointment time because the scheduling system will get them to that location 15, 10 to 15 minutes before the appointment in case they have to get into a building. Um, and so they will get a 20-minute pickup window before that. You know, some trips, like Paul mentioned, it might take 45 minutes to get from point A to point B, so it's backed up even further than that. Mm -hmm. And I think some riders have some confusion in those situations because they don't want to be picked up two hours before their appointment if they're going from Springfield to Northampton, but literally that's what the scheduling we need to do so that we accommodate everybody and mm -hmm. get them on time. You know, and on the other side is, you know, again, PBTA tracks on time performance. All the vehicles have GPS. Um, and, and we're running, you know, 96.5% to 97% on time. Now, what does that mean to the one person that was ran a half an hour late yeah. and was late for the doctor's appointment? It doesn't mean anything to them. So every <laughs> single trip is important. Right. We always are striving for 100%. Um, oh, you got some, you got some excellent drivers. I mean, one driver. That oh yeah. He drives. Uh, he drives this young lady around. She's uh, she's blind. She's a singer. 
and uh, it seems like this one driver drives her all the time. And, you know, he's been, he beautifully goes over and, and, you know, he takes her by the hand, helps her off to the bus to make sure she don't trip on the sidewalk, right? And then he goes in and opens the door for her and everything and walks her to the elevator, right? And, you know, and she's very grateful. She, she loves it, and, you know. And, uh, he gives her the attention, the proper attention that she needs. And, uh, and she raves about it, you know, right? And he don't show up for her, right? She's kind of like down the dump. <laughs> <laughs> she wants all reliable. Yeah, well, right, you know. A, yeah, there's a he lot knows her, of that. Definitely. He knows her every single move, where she's got to be, what time she's got to be there, and, and she's always on time for everything. That's so, great. Right. And there is a lot of that. There's a lot of good, but I, I'm just saying. <laughs> is there, is there one, any way that our group can be helpful with anything, like with sensitivity training or? Actually, this having anything? us here to hear you guys out is helpful. Um, and like I said, we just started using the sensitivity video maybe a month ago. I can't wait to see it because I'm in it. <laughs> yeah. Um, so next time you invite us up, we'll bring it up. Oh, that'd be great. We'll, we'll bring it to the uh, rider meeting in November as well. Um, and actually, the most helpful thing is even not necessarily to wait for a meeting like this. If you hear of complaints or something, to let us know as they happen so we can look into them right away and mm -hmm. deal with the drivers or staff that might be having an issue or might be confused about some information. Um, especially something like the getting the different times available for certain towns or whatever. We want yeah. to make sure that's corrected right away. That would be great yeah, that because that, that woman was very confused and upset. Yeah. It wasn't good. But we find it extremely helpful that you are, uh, continue to invite us to these meetings and, and get to know you better. Well, that's great. We appreciate you coming and having such a good attitude about it. <laughs> not thinking, well, again, oh, no, not them again. <laughs> no, it's, it's a, a transit operation. Things are happening on the street, and there's a hundred things that could be involved with your trip, and any one of them could go wrong, and I think Paul and his people do their best. Um, but like he yeah. said, the one person that's late for their appointment or is late picked up, may not see that part of it. So if we don't continue to hear from people that have issues, you know, certain things might slide by and we don't want to let that happen. Yeah. I do, uh, I do have something to bring up. Uh, mm -hmm. When they, when the PBTA, bus drivers, some of them, when they get there early, they'll park right in front there where the buses pull up. And I'll tell them, you know, move down, you know, Right, because the buses pull in there and they have to pull in so they put their ramp down for right. people wheelchairs and stuff. And a lot of times they just sit there, right, you know, and I'll tell them, right, and sometimes I've, I've gotten a verbal argument with a few of them, right, you know, and to move it. And, so. do it. and then, but then other ones that pull in there and they know it and they go right on down, and, you know. Give, give us a call through, at PBTA you know. if you ever have an issue like that. And again, uh, well, I used to have a number to call, but <laughs> the big buses, we can track it right down to where the bus is on the street, and we know who the driver is and can address that right away. Well, it isn't the big buses. Uh, <laughs> the vans? It's the vans. You know, right? That's Same what I'm thing. About. They, they pull in there and they park right there in front of the doors. And then the, big bus, bus, the big, big buses bus can't come get in. in. And they can't right. get in, they're on the corner like this on the edgeways. Same stuff. thing, if, if you know, we hear from you that you right. had a problem today at 1 o'clock. Or they'll pull in there and they'll leave their motor it. running. That's the other thing. Yeah. And people upstairs are inhaling the exhaust fumes. You know. Right. I'm just you saying know. it's better for us to, to right. deal with it individually with specific drivers uh, than to put up a general notice and then the ones that are causing the problem don't most necessarily take it too seriously. Are, most of the mm -hmm. big buses, mm -hmm. the same drivers all the time. Right. right. You know, you know, they'll come in and go to the bathroom and stuff, you know, right? great, you know, they're great guys. If you yeah. have any problem with the vans, same thing, give us a yeah. call um, and we'll be able to look into it. I think Roy wants to know a number. Yeah, yeah, I'll give it to you. <laughs> Customer service. I remember going over here to the bus terminal over here one time. I made out about like uh, like Santa Claus on the Fourth of July. What bus terminal? Yeah, we're Peter Pan. No, we're, we're the bus that's going for repairs. 
at the bus garage. Oh, on Industrial Ave? Yeah. I went in there and uh, that was like Santa Claus coming on the 4th of July. Well, and they actually operate the buses, so if you went in there about a van issue, they may have looked puzzled. But we'll, give, we'll get you the phone number and you can uh, let us know as soon as possible after it happened. But even if it's a week later and you give us the date and time, we can look into it mm -hmm. and track right down to who's causing the problem. Um, I do want to say that for the most part, um, barring what I said before about people not getting consistent information, I want to say that my experience for the most part has been that um, customer service has been much better. Like whatever you did after all the comments I made and other people made before about the way that people were on the phone, it has improved a lot. So I was trying to visualize that meeting where you told them all. Well, I think it's an ongoing thing. Yeah. I don't think it was one particular meeting, yeah. but it's been a lot of trainings, and like I said, it needs to keep going. So we don't expect that it's going to get fixed, and we're going to walk away from it. It's something right. we need to do reminders all the time. But I've noticed people being much more mindful about saying, oh, you know, have a good day, or sorry about that, or, you know, okay. sure, your ride will be coming in a few minutes, or... Um, there's just been a much more helpful attitude with people who answer the phones. I don't know if other people feel that way, but who call, but I've noticed that change for the good. Great. Well, being the senior center director, I'm thrilled that there is the <laughs> opportunity for people to get transportation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, I'll, I'll give you one uh, PBTA update while I'm here, and we'll talk about it more at the mm -hmm. Northampton Rider meeting. Is PBTA has had a long-standing policy of strict door-to-door -door service for 100% of our passengers, and I would say more than half of the passengers, and it might not necessarily be the people in this room, but more than half of the passengers don't necessarily need it, and many of those don't even want the door-to-door -door assistance. At times, they're offended that the driver, as Tori mentioned earlier. They're saying, you know, we're independent enough, we don't need you to come to the door kind of thing. Not everybody, but there is a population of our riders that feel uncomfortable that the driver is coming to the door. So, um, hmm. why are they uncomfortable? Yeah. I don't feel that uh, I guess for the same reason, and it might be a different perspective, Tori, but they feel that they're independent and just because they have a disability, and again, this is just some people, mm -hmm. that they can get to and from the van on their own. Okay. And, uh, so we've pressed hard, I've pressed them hard that 100% of the trips we need to provide door-to-door -door service. And in conversation with uh, riders over the years, um, what we're going to do is do door-to-door -door assistance upon request, which means we're going to talk to the riders on an individual basis Aww. while they're mm -hmm. requesting their ride. Uh, Paul's sense. staff is going to mm -hmm. ask them if oh. they need door-to-door -door assistance. Mm -hmm. And then it'll be also um, not only with their trip history, but also in the information that is, um, drivers have on the vehicle, there'll be a code that'll tell them whether they do door-to-door -door assistance or not. Mm -hmm. So some people, it may end up that certain times a year when it's light out like this, that they don't need assistance right now, but in a month, when it's dark out at this time, they might need door-to-door -door mm -hmm. assistance. Or, it's snow, or it could be. So again, we want that conversation to happen during the trip request process. Oh, so at some point, you may get customer service staff or call taker staff that don't ask and we really want the riders to then say hey for this particular trip I need door-to-door -door assistance and don't wait necessarily for this to happen and it, but we're going to get the policy out there that mm -hmm. it's going to be door-to-door -door assistance upon request and that way there That's we smart. already know there's going to be a bunch of people that say put me down 100% of the time I don't want door-to-door -door assistance and there's going to be a whole lot of other people that still need it and we're happy to do it and what that will do Mm -hmm. is it's going to end up speeding up the service because the drivers wow. aren't getting off the van for 100% of their trips all day long. There's other times where people are on the van and the driver has to get off, um, and that presents a problem in itself mm -hmm. as far as safety for our concerns and things right. like that. So we think I, it's for the positive, and uh, we it, hope that it all works it out. I have to sense. agree with that. Yeah. I think it's a well plan that you're putting in place. To me... Because so many people have so many types of disabilities, yeah. I can see where some would say, I don't like door-to-door -door right. because I am independent. And I like the idea yeah. of them saying or calling 
that I do need assistance. I think that's going to help you out, and I agree as far as the traveling part of it. I think yeah. that's very smart. Now, for me, for example, it would be situational. I would say that when I'm being picked up at my home, I wouldn't need that because I'm able to walk out to the van. But if I'm someplace less familiar, like say if I'm waiting at my office mm -hmm. and I don't necessarily know exactly where the van is and there's different possibilities for where it could be, it would be helpful to have the door-to-door -door service and have the driver come and identify themselves to me. So, And it, that's why we want to ask as well. the riders, but we also want the riders to take responsibility to know that they can request it. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So like I said, you may get to a point where we feel like we know everybody and what they want and what they don't want. There's going to be a smaller population of people that need it sometimes and not others, and we want those people like yourself, Tori, mm -hmm. when you call in a trip request to say, hey, mark me down, I need the door, door assistance for this end of the trip. And that would mean the driver would come to the door. Yep, yeah. for that um, particular trip. That feels really helpful, and that also feels really respectful to me to, to ask and to give people the opportunity to say what they want and don't want. That feels like a really respectful, good idea. Well, and so again, I want to be clear that we're asking, but at, at some point we want the riders to step in and say on their own too what they want. Absolutely. So it's a little bit of both. Dan, you have a question? Yeah. Here we go. Hi. Something about the door to door service? Oh, the door to door service is the driver leaving the van to meet the passenger at the door. And then at the end of the trip to get them off the van and bring them to the door. Is that what you're saying? I ask you to do it for your ears. Stop. I'm going to come. I don't know. I'm going to do it. I ask you to do it for your ears. I'm going to do it for your ears. Coming to wait at the curb? Yeah. Yeah, so there's a difference between regular, the curb to curb service. Uh, a lot of transit properties did that early on. And uh, some properties like PVTA, and when I say properties, I'm talking transit agencies, did door to door. And it was all or nothing. Either it was all curb to curb and there was no assistance, or it was all door to door and everybody, the driver, met them at the door. <laughs> so this is going to be a hybrid of that. And again, we're going to try to do this. Uh, sharing information but also expecting responsibility on the part of the rider to get to understand that they have the ability to request it when they need to as well. Absolutely. When is that policy coming? Into we have already started phasing it in so we haven't gotten to the point of telling anybody they can't have door-to-door -door service and we will never get to that but Paul's staff and uh, PBTA's eligibility staff have already started talking to riders about that. Okay. And I think it needs to be on an individual basis. There's yep. a lot of people that we have eligible that don't ride for certain periods of time. So it's not something we can just do overnight and then expect everybody knows what's going on. That's great. Um, I have a question. I, I absolutely agree about riders taking responsibility I for... Hi, Hannah. Hannah. Oh, it's her banner. Oh, um, I, I absolutely 100% agree about riders taking responsibility and asking for what they need and knowing what they should ask for. <coughs> um, how do you deal with people who have like cognitive impairments or elderly people with memory issues that just might not remember? On something like, uh, on the door to door type situation? On the door to door type situation, like, or, or situations where they have to remember to ask for certain things or they won't get it. Um, the staff, I'll speak for Paul, I, I've been in his shoes before, the staff will get to know those particular passengers and it might have a little bit longer conversation. Oh, that's good. Um, to make sure they understand what we're asking and why we're asking. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, sometimes uh, people with cognitive issues or seniors, their disabilities may progress to the point that we need to contact another family member or something like that. So we keep all that in mind. That's great. As far as what's going on with riders. Um, but it's it's hard. I mean, I don't I don't know that we catch every single time of somebody saying mm -hmm. yes, I understand, and they hang up the phone, and they might not understand. Right. 
We try. <laughs> now, uh, wouldn't it, wouldn't it be uh, a little more impersonal or a little more personal if when they called up to set up their van, right? Uh, whoever they were speaking to said, "Well, as an extra courtesy to you, we do provide this door-to-door -door service if you would like it." Well, that's pretty right. much. And what then, we're and then to. they, yeah, you know, great. that way there, it, uh, you know, you're not just saying, "Well, we have the door-to-door -door service," that's you know. Right. Right. That's that's what we're yeah. saying is going to happen. Right. That's but great. I mean, it's softening it to let that's the person she, make their. That's what she just communicated right. with. Right. I think that's really respectful, and I think that that'll be a, a change for the good, definitely. And so I would say yeah, in a few right. months that we would get to all the riders that know that that's the policy, that door-to-door -door assistance is provided upon request. So like I said, uh, I can't stress enough, but at some point, you know, the riders that use the service will know when they call in, yep, I want the door-to-door -door assistance without even being uh, reminded. Mm -hmm. So, good. Well, well, I the only thing I was saying you would say as a say to them that as a courtesy, you know, rather than what we provide. Right. You know, Got it. Uh, courtesy kind of throws it as okay. You're asking. It, it sounds like that's what they're planning to do. No. All right. Does anyone else the word have makes a big difference? And, and agreed. Um, does anyone else have any? Thing they want to ask Paul or Nicole or make any other anyone have any more comments? Oh, yeah, I, I want to thank both of you for being here. Yes, and um, I know there was probably what one, two, three, four of us that asked questions. Tori spent a good period of time at this meeting, and Tori, you had some excellent, excellent questions to be answered. So I want to thank you for being here. Sure, anytime. Thank you both for coming. I appreciate thank it a you. lot. Yeah, mm -hmm. Happy to come back. Let us yeah. know when you want us to come back and we'll show the video. But I'll also be in touch with you, Patty, about okay. November. The ridership meeting. Yeah. And Great. I'll make sure everybody knows about it. Thank you. Great. And I want to put in a plug for it being in the evening so I can come. <laughs> it will be. Oh, awesome. What would you say? I want to put in a plug for it being in the evening so I can come. Because I work full time. So you mean like a passed out to you was the draft copy of our bylaws. Mm -hmm. um, Councilor Labarge, Ruth, and myself worked on that. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, so it's a draft. So everybody, if you can review it, um, so that at the November meeting we can go through it and um, make changes and then hopefully vote on it if that was possible. Mm -hmm. Okay. What I would that highly suggest great. at our next meeting that this be placed on the agenda for first. Yes. Okay. So that we can spend some time on the language if it has to be done. Okay. That sounds there was a lot of work put into this. That sounds totally agreeable and reasonable to me. Thank you. And I'd be happy. And I also have something else for new business. I'd like an update on our audio equipment. Have you heard anything on that yet? Tonight? Yeah, we're um, the thing, we're waiting for two things. Um, another, we're, we needed three mixers. Don't tell me what. Don't ask what each piece is. It's it's the whole. All of it coming is very complicated. Um, so we need one more mixer. I'm not worried about the cart that we need to put everything on mm -hmm. to move it around. And a, um, I think it's another. Uh, what's it called? There's another item. I, I'm forgetting the name of what that item is. So we're, that's the two things we're waiting for. And we still have that money that um, was voted on. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But the mixer has already gone up um, a lot. So, mm. But there's still money. That's why I'm holding off on the uh, cart. Because I, the cart is 
where you put everything on to move it around mm -hmm. and store it versus the mixer which you need in order for all the microphones that we're going to have. So that's the status of that. So my question is, this was ordered in June. I have it written down in my book with me. So it's June, July, August, September, and October, five months to get these parts. Um, everything was ordered online, um, and I think it was ordered in July, but I'm, I'm not 100% sure. Mm -hmm. So everything was coming piecemeal. Okay. It wasn't all coming at once. And so now with um, the back order, we there is no back order for that mixer. We have to have it from another company. And it, the one that we found is... Uh, is more money than what was planned on. Is so, that through Al? It's what Al, well, and Al came here, Al Will, uh, Williams from um, NCTV came, I think two weeks ago to look at everything we had yeah. to make sure that what we didn't have is, is what we needed to reorder. Okay. Okay. And um, so that's where we're at. There's a lot of equipment, and if anybody wants to check it out, um, it's in our conference room right now. And you'll see how bulky all of it is. Um, the speakers are pretty mm -hmm. big, um, but I, I, I think it'll be a nice system once we have everything. So, did they give an estimate, Patty, on how long it's going to take for? Are you saying one mixer or three? We have two. We, we need three. Two, so we need one more. We need one more mixer, and the other piece that we need. To complement the rest of it, I can't, I, it's not coming to me what the name of that item yeah, is. Yeah. And as I said, the cart is, I, I'm not ordering that because I need to make sure we have enough money mm -hmm. with what Excellent. was approved <clears throat> by commission and also by city council. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So that would be another. So the company hasn't said yet when that other piece is coming? No, because we haven't ordered it because we can't order it from the same company because they don't have it. So who is responsible for ordering that next It person? would be me. So either I'm going to order online, which isn't really what I'm looking to do, mm -hmm. unless it's absolutely necessary. I'd like to go to either Downtown Sounds or to Sonics, which is what Al Williams had yeah. um, suggested. But he, he, my question to him was, do, should we get the same brand of mixer? And he said, yes. yes that so makes sense. that's what it is. But having gone online to see where other mixers were, that's where we found out the price.